The Monerotopia guest segment is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. All right, Seth, what's going on, hey, man? Hey, hey, going pretty How well. Are you? Good How to are be you? Here. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we got you. Yes. Hold on, nice. let me get rid of this uh, charts thing. Yeah, we're good. What's up, man? You're back. You never left. I am. You never I'm left. <laughs> <laughs> I think some people Don't thought worry. I left. Some people thought I left, but I've, I've always I've been, been there. I've been Learned trying to. Uh, yeah, I've been trying to save your character out here. I'm like <laughs> that said, he never. It is true. You never left Monero. You mm-hmm. were. You, you've been uh, just passionate about your uh, exploration of privacy tech. Yeah. And and yeah. and and and, and the, the privacy tech that is the the most useful to the most amount of people that's i feel like that's that's been your mission is that is that accurate yeah yeah i definitely think that's kind of how i would summarize it is like obviously i've I've always just absolutely loved monero monero is the reason i care about personal privacy like I've, i've told my story many times but it's because of the monero community and because of monero as a project that like i exist in in this form at all as somebody who cares about uh taking actual like actionable steps towards human freedom and building tools that help human freedom, um, building things around Monero, building things around Bitcoin that actually help to preserve some privacy, not just custodial tools, which are uh, all the rage today in Bitcoin, unfortunately. Um, but there's a, there's, there's definitely a part of me that has always wanted to do things in a broader way than just Monero, which sounds weird. I know some people are very like Monero all the way, but there's just a lot of people who right now aren't using Monero, unfortunately. Uh, and I w- I've always wanted to make sure that they have access to financial privacy as well. So this little kind of foray into the the Bitcoin-centric space, I think is maybe a better term for it. And that was kind of what we were careful to use at Foundation because lots of people at Foundation love Monero. Um, we had lots of conversations around Monero within the team and have been trying to find ways that we could kind of fit in uh I still say we. I'm still not used to the change. They. <laughs> <laughs> you were so committed. I know. I know. I'm still selling. Uh, yeah. Just uh, it was. It was a big deal for them too. But there just there wasn't a clear path towards focusing more on Monero. So I was really psyched when this this opportunity came up. I'm um, just chatting with Vic off and on over the past few months and and trying to figure out if if there was a, a good fit here where I could I could help jump in, help take some of the load off of him because he's man that guy's is nuts. I don't think anyone understands properly. I mean, you, you probably understand more than just about anyone else. Oh yeah. How much yeah. he does in both of his day jobs and like the amount that he contributes back and uh just really a, a person that I, I highly, highly respect and have been been thankful to call a friend for a long time. So yeah, just really excited for this chance yeah. to, to jump back in and have a clear, consistent focus on Monero, but not at the expense of dropping all of the research and education and improvements to Bitcoin privacy that I've been also trying to work on. So I think that's why it's really just kind of like the, the match made in heaven um, with cake wallet pioneering silent payments and um, lots of other fun stuff on the horizon as well that, that fit in well with bringing privacy to more people um, while also focusing on Monero as the, the bread and butter of what we do. So I'm really pumped for it. Amazing, man. Right place, right time. So, but foundation really, um, they really didn't want to move forward with adding, you know, adding Monero in any way. Um, so it's really more of, they would love Monero support on their devices, but it just wasn't something where, where they were going to have the bandwidth to actually build it themselves. So like Mm. I, I teased at the end of my announcement that cake will be working with foundation. Um, like we have some, some plans there on how. Okay. We can potentially bring Monero support to foundation uh, devices to Passport now that people know and to a uh, a future as to be revealed device um, that will be an even better fit for Monero. Um, so there's there's definitely stuff in the works. Like like I said, foundation loves Monero, but they were always very careful to use that term Bitcoin centric because they they viewed it as we're going to build for Bitcoin first, but we're going to build open tools that people can use and expand to 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 do other things like Monero. 
Um, and while that was a little limited on the passport that we have today, uh, on the future device, it's it's going to be a lot more wide open. So there's going to be clear, clear collaborate, clear, cur- ugh, man, that's hard, a tongue twister, clear collaboration um, between us for sure, because I, I, I just absolutely love the ethos of Foundation. Like, I, I have no bad things to say about that team and leaving, and it certainly wasn't anything where, like, uh, there were, were issues there that, that I needed to get away from, but rather just that I figured this would be the real kind of perfect crossover of the things that I love and still in an interesting and different way, continue to, to help out the mission that foundation has, uh, via K quality, which I'm, I'm excited for what we'll be able to do there over the next six months, year. How are you seeing, uh, Monero adoption right now? Are a lot of Bitcoin privacy people moving over to Monero? Are they more welcoming to Monero more than ever? That's, that's my perception, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think in the wake of Samurai Wallet, there has been a, a monumental shift towards this, like this idea of saving in Bitcoin and spending in Monero, um, which I know, uh, don't trace me, bro, has some, some good counterpoints to the ways that I've kind of talked about that strategy before. Basically that Monero should and could be a fantastic store of value as well. Um, and we've seen that even it has been quite a good store of value despite delistings and despite everything else, it's been been holding well. Um, but within the Bitcoin camps, like they, there is a clear desire to have an easy way to spend and maintain financial privacy. For a long time, Lightning was said to be that, um, but up until, in my opinion, very, very recently, like the last few months, it hasn't actually lived up to that expectation. And even still, really, I think the only wallet where Lightning lives up to that expectation is Phoenix Wallet, but it has clear uh, privacy issues on the sender side, which they're, they're upfront about, but essentially you don't gain sender privacy from Phoenix themselves when using Phoenix Wallet. But the rest of the experience is very good. Receiver privacy is good. There's a lot of, a lot of good things about it, um, but there hasn't been this like easy to use privacy preserving Lightning Wallet that actually lived up to the expectations. So I think in the wake of that, Bitcoiners have gone two ways. There's been the just shocking and frustrating shift towards Fediments, eCash, Cashew, all of the kind of custodial tools that give you privacy from the custodian, but make you trust a custodian. They, they make you give up your keys. You, you can no longer actually hold your Bitcoin. You get some, some IOU eCash token that you hope you can redeem for Bitcoin in the future. And while it does give good privacy, it's just that there's no, there's no way that we can settle for giving up custody to get privacy or this is going to fall apart quickly, not to mention the fragility of a custodial system as the privacy tool because that that will be taken down in a heartbeat if it actually gets gets clear usage because it's easy to take down and it has a clear regulatory framework for being taken down. So um, that's one path that Bitcoiners are taking. That's just driving me nuts that I've been one of the few. There are, there are more uh, people against it than speak out about it, which kind of always seems to be the trend, frustrating as that is. Um, but I've been one of the more vocal ones really kind of pushing back on that and saying like, guys, if, if we're giving up on self-custody and privacy and saying the only way we can solve these two things is by just giving up custody altogether. Like there's no point, there's no point in having Bitcoin. This doesn't make any sense anymore. Um, but that's definitely the bad path. The other, well, what, what, is, what is good. Yeah. What, what is your prediction there with regards to what Bitcoin will become? What is it on? What is its mo- most likely trajectory at this point? I, I think it's hard to predict because Bitcoin's really at a fork in the road right now. Um, with the conversations around soft forks for things like Opcat or Covenants, if those go well and we actually get some form of a soft fork that allows much be- much better programmability of Bitcoin and allows better self-custody tools, allows better privacy tools to be built, I think there's a lot of hope for it continuing to be a useful tool. Like I'm not saying it will be... It's never going to be like a, a Monero-like privacy tool. It, that's just not going to happen because that the consensus is never going to get there for that. But if it can get these a soft fork like this, and it seems like there's pretty good consensus around it, I think there's some hope left. Um, but if these soft fork discussions stall out and don't go anywhere, um, there's just going to be very little that you can that you can do on top of Bitcoin that's actually useful um, because the, the issues with Lightning will will persist and won't be solvable without one of these soft forks. Um, 
other layer two networks like Arc, which is really promising, is drastically worse if you don't have covenants. Uh, and a lot of the potential privacy tools that could be built using covenants just can't exist. So there's there's certainly kind of a fork in the road right now. So it's hard to predict. I, I, I'm hopeful that the conversations around these soft forks have actually been pretty positive, a lot better than I expected. So I think there's hope that Bitcoin will get better. And the important thing there for Monero people specifically is that Bitcoin remaining an openly accessible form of money, like I'm not going to say it's digital cash or something like that, but at least money that you can get relatively easily and spend and store in a self-custodial way with pretty good privacy assurances is an invaluable tool to Monero users because it, it is a, it's a censorship resistant on ramp. That's like, it's impossible to stop. Um, like the, the unstoppable swap guys chose their, their name appropriately because with atomic swaps or even with just the simple decentralized exchanges that we have today, Bitcoin is a, just a, an immensely powerful on ramp. Um, so we want Bitcoin, like as Monero people, we should want Bitcoin to continue improving as a tool for freedom, not only for the, the just broader uh, amounts of people who are going to be using Bitcoin, whether or not they realize the need for privacy, those sorts of things, um, but also just as an on ramp for Monero, it's really, really important that we have Bitcoin continue to be that. So that's that's where I'm kind of like hopeful, but we're really at a fork in the road on Bitcoin. And I think within the next like one to two years, we'll know, is this just kind of dead end? Are we just kind of done here? And there's not much more we can do outside of like non-protocol improvements, things like silent payments that are good, but they're just addressing a very small piece of the problem. Um, or will we get these software changes and be able to actually build out uh, better privacy tools, better self-custody, that sort of thing to to keep Bitcoin at least as a useful tool? Amazing assessment. I mean, so it's the, it's the number go up crowd is really who's running Bitcoin right now. Would you would you say that's that's fair? Like politically, in terms of yeah, yeah. I mean, I would I would say so. It's always hard to judge because like the window we get into Bitcoin, at least myself as primarily on X and sometimes on Noster, it's just a it's a it's an echo chamber, like a wild echo chamber. So it's hard to judge what the like broad consensus is outside of the the reing voices on twitter um but it certainly seems like the trend has continued towards number go up at all costs uh with etfs and people cheering those on with a lot of people yeah, starting yeah. to say like just give up on self-custody don't worry about it we have etfs like you can just do that we have ecash you can just do that for your spending uh and and don't worry about the rest but it's, I wouldn't say that it's like controlled at this point. I know there's a lot of debate about that always, but rather that many of the vocal voices are like that. Um, but there are still really good people, especially like around the soft forks that I mentioned. There's really good people who are brilliant and uh, well-spoken who are pushing hard for Bitcoin to continue to evolve and get better in all the ways that we love in Monero. Being easier to self custody, being easier to spend privately, having better node privacy, mining becoming more decentralized and more accessible as commodity hardware uh, through things like the BitX project. Like, there's still really, really cool stuff going on. Um, but yeah, of course, the the influencers are influencing, and most of them are unfortunately corrupt and happy to just to to take the pay that they can get and and show what they can and and push for number go up. Um, but thankfully, that's not everyone. So there's definitely still there's there's great people in Bitcoin, and that's been one encouraging thing and discouraging thing of getting just kind of like deeper into the the bitcoin ecosystem is you learn that some people who you really respected are really just there to pump themselves up and weren't actually pushing for human freedom as much as you thought um, but then you also get to find people who are smaller they don't have the platform that others do who really are focused on the right things um, and are really fighting for powerful improvements on Bitcoin for decentralized mining, like I mentioned, people that are really pushing hard for the right things. Um, so it has been cool to find those people, but they are those, are those already. people often Monero people as well or no? I mean, I would say almost without exception, they at least have a respect for Monero. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the many of them use Monero and to like, to call back to your earlier question that I kind of veered off of, um, that's been like the crazy shift since Samurai Wallet is, this idea of like people, people who are like Bitcoiners, like I'm not, not people who just use Bitcoin, but people who like would call themselves Bitcoiners. Like they're not going to abandon Bitcoin as a store of value. 
um, unless things get like really, really bad. But they want to be able to spend privately. And in the wake of Samurai Wallet, Wasabi Wallet, Phoenix leaving the U.S., LSPs leaving the U.S., just just clear issues with being able to achieve spending in Bitcoin, much less spending with privacy. Um, people have shifted to Monero. Like uh, a lot of people that I did not expect to be open to it at all have shifted to Monero. Just like always, there's a lot of people who are well-known but in the shadows and don't talk about how they use Monero and appreciate it. But it, it continues to be where Monero is one of those that that everyone respects. Like without a doubt, anyone who is genuine absolutely respects Monero, understands its value, and is happy to see it used. Um, so yeah, it's definitely been it's been encouraging to see when there was a gap to fill. Monero really did fill that gap uh, in a way that I was hopeful for, but obviously couldn't. It, it's hard to predict exactly what will happen. Will everyone just bail and go to to eCash or whatever, or will will people decide like, no, I actually care about self custody more than I care about something being denominated in Bitcoin but not held by me? Um, and so there's there's a lot more people using Monero now than there were before, and Monero is one of those things that like it gets its hooks in you because once you actually use it and you understand how easy it is to use in a privacy preserving manner because you just use it and it is privacy preserving. <laughs> you don't, once you get away from the hoops that you have to jump through on Bitcoin, uh, it's really hard to go back at that point. Um, so it has a, a beautiful snowball effect of people getting into Monero, understanding how powerful of a tool it is, wanting to start, be able to easily exchange it between Bitcoin and Monero. So you get all of those on ramps between Bitcoin and Monero, getting more liquidity and more funding. All of those are getting better. Um, you get more people using things like Cake Wallet. So they're starting to understand more about how they can easily swap between them, how they can use Monero easily, where they can use Monero, gift cards they can buy with Monero. Like you, you, you get people kind of falling into that, that Monero rabbit hole, uh, and that aids the circular economy. More people want to accept Monero. It, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. So it has been really cool to see. And it's one of kind of the, the silver linings of the crackdown on Bitcoin privacy is that people are, are finally like those that respected Monero, but were like, I'm just, I don't need it. Like, I'm not going to mess with it. They're finally going like, okay, I actually, <laughs> I really need this now. Like, I understand. I'm gonna go try this out, uh, and they're they're getting hooked. You gotta come. You gotta come down to Monerotopia, man. You gotta come hang out. You gotta come hang out. No, no way we I get know. you down there in person. I don't think so. Uh, so I I had already agreed to do the Plan B forum in Lugano um, before all this shift from Foundation to, to Cake, and they, they wanted me to come out and focus like exclusively on Bitcoin privacy stuff um, with some, some really interesting topics. Um, and so I'd already set all that up, and it's just a great chance also to get my family out to Switzerland and Italy and just have some, awesome. some time off yeah. there as well. So, so we'll be doing that. I think, I mean, I'll probably get back before Monerotopia, but it'll be like yeah. a few days before. And I, I don't know. That Mexico I can, city I can is a nice place to hang out too, man. It's a nice, it's a I nice know. hangout. You'll, you'll enjoy it. I'm definitely going to be down there. I mean, obviously now that I'm with cake, Monero events are going to be heavy focus. Um, so I'll be, I'll be able to shift a lot of that from the, um, the Bitcoin scene to the Monero scene, focus more on Monerotopia, get back to MoneroCon. I'm really excited for that. I miss, I miss, uh, I miss my people. What do you, what would you say the community should be focused on right now to, uh, to best grow usage of Monero? Hmm. What should we all be? Uh... Yeah. I mean, I really think obviously full chain membership proofs is huge. So pushing that, supporting that, um, donating and verbally supporting the devs who are working on anything around full chain membership proofs. Cause that's really, that's kind of the, the final jewel in the crown of Monero. Cause at that point there's just, there's not a, there's not a clear or arguable weakness and everyone is going to get massively improved privacy from that. So that's obviously like the, the, the big thing that we need to continue harping on and focusing on. But obviously there's not a lot that we can each individually do with that. Like there are brilliant people working on that that are far smarter than me. And I, I have nothing contri to contribute directly to like full chain membership proof development or research. But I think the thing where we really need to continue focusing, uh, and it's going to be, be a big focus for me at cake as well is just continuing to get the sync user experience better usability yeah yeah like it, it has gotten way better since i started in monero like it's wild if someone picks up a monero wallet today for the first time like their experience is just like 
mind blowing compared to what it used to be like using Monero yeah, 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 yeah. five, six, seven years ago. Crazy. Um, we've come a long way, and a lot of that has come down to wallets getting better. Things like like Cake Wallet just bringing improvements over and over and over the years, but uh, also a lot of back end work like from Justin Berman, his 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 big. Um, we got to get we tagging oh, sync. Yes. I, I was just gonna say his like his tagging sync proposal that was implemented a few years ago that that drastically mm-hmm. reduced sync times. It's gotten to where it's like. For a Monero user, it feels great and fast. But if you ask somebody to come from like a regular Bitcoin wallet where they're using like a fulcrum backend where their wallet basically just says, these are my addresses, give me the balance, which yes, is awful for privacy. Uh, I definitely understand that, but it's really good for usability. And you're asking someone to come from that where they essentially have their wallet always synced without ever having to wait. To Monero, where if you're if you're spending regularly, like I am, like I I, I never I never have problems with sync. It's just not a problem because I'm I'm constantly spending it, opening it to try out some new feature, to test something, to swap back and forth. Like I'm almost always relatively close to being in sync. But for somebody who uses it like once a month or every couple months, that sync process is still really painful. So I think there should be a, a continued big focus on specifically background sync on mobile apps so that your wallet can continue to sync in the background, even when you don't have it open, using the view key, which is another thing that uh, I think it was Justin Berman who who worked on that, making that easier to actually accomplish. Um, and really just making we're, it we're so inter- that We're integrating that into the, uh, the Noto, by the oh, way. Nice. Yeah, okay. yeah. How will that work? I guess you'll... you'll Through the Monero will... Light Wallet server. Uh, you would, yeah, okay. you, so you would enter it into your Noto, as, mm-hmm. and then you could... You know, use the My Monero wallet or, you know, some of these others that that use LWS. Yeah, trying yeah, to get cake, was... trying to get cake to add yeah. that. By the way, I've been asking yeah. Vic. So wait, maybe yeah. maybe maybe this can, you can put this on your <laughs> on your to do list. Come on, man. It definitely will be. I've actually had it on my list for a long time because I okay. I Make like I don't happen. want it to be the default. I definitely don't want it to be the default. But it should be an option for people who have their own Light Wallet server or have someone that they trust. Yeah. So because now, the thing now you I can think... run, I, I, you know, this is my thinking with Noto the entire time, right? Because I'm a cake user and I, w- I wanted to get around the, the, the sync time. Yep. Uh, that seems like the best path towards it, right? So you run, you run your own node, your own white wallet server, and you're connected to, to cake and you're getting instantaneous transactions and you're not sacrificing any privacy. Yeah, it definitely is. And it's like... The funny thing too is we're so hardcore in the Monero community that like the thought of giving over your view key and someone knowing what transactions you have, even if they don't know details about where they're going or where they're coming from, is like uh, is like the plague to Monero users. But that's like better than any Bitcoin wallet sync experience that people have today. Um, so like even in that worst case of like I'm not I'm like I don't think I would ever want Cake to run our own light wallet server. Um, but even in like the use case of Let's say I ran a public light wallet server that anyone could use, and I would have visibility into your transactions. I'm not going to do this, I don't think. But if I was, that privacy experience is still drastically better than almost any other cryptocurrency out there and still prevents even me from learning a lot of information about your transactions as well. Um, so even in that case where you're like using a trusted third party, it's still a relatively good privacy experience, even if they're malicious in the end. And if they're not malicious, it's fantastic privacy because they're not logging, they're not giving that over to someone else. Um, it can be nice, but especially for those people running nodes, running something like Nodo, like that's the dream. And that's the same place where I'm trying to to take, or that I want to see silent payments go on the Bitcoin side, since they have the same sync problems as we do in Monero. It's the exact same experience. Um, moving to something where it's easy to self-host a light, light wallet server, called something else inside the payments but the same idea is really critical um so like i, I definitely want to see that and it's definitely something that is on my my list with cake as well um for implementing the ability for people to opt into that uh, it's not something we would do we would default to like our own light wallet server but allowing people to opt into it and point it to then, their own or to someone they trust a family member a friend etc would be really powerful i mean even more important than than sync is getting rid of that lock time we that's an even more onerous, you know. Yeah, it's weird to me because bar- like it's a bar- it's a barrier to entry. Uh, anybody is. that's using Monero for the first time that receive I talked to so many, and I've obviously experienced it myself so many times, but also then mm-hmm. just 
talking to other people that are like, oh my God, I didn't know it had this flaw. It's like, that's, that's one, that is, I would say Monero's worst usability flaw. Hmm. Even worse than sync, you think? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Because you can sync. It's very, it's very, you know, if there's really, it's, there's no, anybody can sync. You just have to wait. Right. But the, the 20, there's, there's no work around the 20 minute lock time. I mean, there is, but it's like, you have to take a lot more steps, right? You could send you can send a batch yeah. transaction to yourself, right? But that's not, you know, that's abstract. People shouldn't have to think I have to, you know, even do that, right? Yeah, Thinking, I mean, okay, I just have to wait. Like, they, you know, all right, I'm waiting. That sucks. But a lot of people just don't even know how to fix the 20 minute lock time situation on their own. Yeah. And that's where, like, I like the pocket change feature that Monero Joe implemented. Cause like if it's not going to be fixed at the consensus level anytime soon, uh, and I, I don't think it's changed in FCMP. Um, as far as I know, FCMP plus plus specifically will not remove the 10 block lock. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but I was just reading through the spec again and I, I don't think it removes that. Um, so we'll still have it here, but there are easy ways to work around it. Like the thing that you mentioned though, is like, if you're, onboarding someone or showing someone how Monero works by sending them Monero to their wallet. There's no way to work around that. Like they're going to have to wait for 10 blocks and that's, that's super painful. Um, so I definitely would love yeah. to see that fixed. You can abstract away a lot of the pain for the user by doing something like pocket change where you're automatically get setting up different denominations and, and rolling with that. And that approach works well. Like you, you naturally have that if you use Monero frequently, like I, I'm not normally having to do anything of like sending multiple inputs to myself or something like that. Um, but obviously for the new user, that is a big, a big gap. And even more so because for the new user, when they open a wallet for the first time and receive it the first time, they're not having to deal with the sync experience. Um, so it can definitely be, definitely be daunting. Um, but yeah, I would like to see that fixed as well. I, I, that, I need to that look, should be the, uh, that, that should be the hackathon challenge at Monerotopia. Get rid of the 20 minute lock. <laughs> And may, maybe Luke, maybe Luke will just be like, I already yeah. know how to get rid of it. You guys just weren't I thought listening. That, I thought that. <laughs> I'm pretty um, sure Luke has some, some path towards it. I I forget what his, what is Luke's latest take on that? On the yeah, that's a good minute, question, you know? honestly. Yeah. I, I've yeah, definitely I'm asked sure. him numerous times. I forget what his latest path forward towards that is, but there is a path, to my understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was going to be gone in Seraphis, but not in FCMP++, but I'm not really sure, honestly. I got to get these uh, super chats up here. Uh, prying Lantis tip to dollar sixty nine. Hi Seth, how do you like XMR chat? Do you know about XMR chat? I don't. Is this no. Teach me. Uh, so you go to xmrchat.com slash Monero talk and you can send us a super chat. So it's a way for people to create their own super chat accounts, run it through StreamYard, and uh, their audience can tip in Monero. You don't have to set up an account as a tipper. Let's test this out. Yeah, test it out. It's it's a really beautiful service. It's nice. How is this? Uh, is it custodial? Set this hacking you... right now. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, it's, you know, it's completely. Uh... You're seeing yep, this live. Yep. The the transactions are peer to peer. It's just the the fee of the network. The Monero nice. goes directly to the streamer. Upload view key or something for that? How does it work? Yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, if you go to create an account, you could see how that all works. But just a tip, um, yeah, you don't need to create an account, obviously. It's just message mm -hmm. and send Monero to an address. Yep. yep. Um, wait, hold on. See what else? We do have another one. Let's... Oh, what is this one? XMR chat. Hi, tipped a dollar. Seth, any plans to add I2P to your run of Monero node guides? Hmm. That's a good question. That's a... It's a good question. Probably not, just because it's not used very often. Um, so it's just not a priority for me. I mean, it would be good like if, if someone wanted to implement it in the guide, like all of my, all of my documentation is open source. You can just open a PR in GitHub and add it. So like if, if someone who knows using ITP well with Monero D, um, feel free to, to take a stab at it, but it's also just something I've, I've dug into ITP as a protocol from like the theory level, but I haven't used it a ton and I haven't used it at all specifically with Monero software. Um, I'm very hesitant to use anonymity networks that have 
as far as I know, relatively low usage. Um, so I generally don't recommend that sort of thing off the gun, but it's something I'm definitely open to. And if someone has that expertise, by all means, I'm happy to add something. If you have specific info you want to, to add to the guide, or if you want to PR the specific details, that can definitely be added. Fantastic. Minerju evangelist tipped a dollar. Shout out to Minerju for the pocket. Yeah, yeah, they do have pocket change. I don't really use Minerju. Um, I'm usually usually using Cake, but I do have my gra graphene phone. I like, I have to start fitting it into my my daily routine. I already the thing is I already have two phones. I have like a work phone, personal phone. I just need to get the graphene going on a daily or maybe just for Monero stuff and just graphene for personal. No, you just gotta, you gotta yeah, dive in. You gotta dive in. I know I have it and it's, it's slick. It is slick. It works well. So I was have I had, did have Monero on there and I was using it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I will, uh, I will pledge to, I'm gonna try to have that going for Monero Topia. Got another up. one. Okay. Seth for privacy tipped 25 bucks. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> All right, dude. Very generous tip. Thank you. I so don't much. know why it's it's twenty five and one cent. <laughs> I just said twenty five. It went up. Is that like an it went XMR up and set it down. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's it. Oh my Cake god. Cake says twenty five dot oh three. So maybe I shorted you a couple cents. <laughs> you no. you really just put in twenty five? Yeah, I just put in twenty five. That's interesting. I think well, there might we'll be a little bug. We'll have to look bug. into that. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe their fiat calculations are just a little bit different. Yeah. But I put in twenty five on the XMR chat side, and then just sent in cake, and I didn't I didn't look at what it said in cake. But now it says twenty five and three cents there. So yeah, that's pretty cool though. I didn't I didn't realize that I existed. I definitely have to look into that if I do any any more live streams. Yeah, I worked on that with uh, Fiat Demise, okay. and then we have um, another a guy who actually did most of the development. I forget I don't have his name off the top of my head, but. Yeah, the MVP came out very nice, and then we're we're trying to to you know we'll obviously iterate it, see what features we can add, um, to add like a revenue model to it. Yeah, does it take a fee or anything off of? No, or no, no. Oh, currently, yeah, it's, it's not ta directly. It's currently, not people. taking any fees, yeah, right? So we got to figure out a revenue model. I mean, because it it could be um, quite useful for people if it really catches on, right? Like if you're going to be yeah. doing super chats, you might as well be doing it in a form where you're not losing any any privacy and you're not losing a fee to a, a, a you know a middleman freaking 30 so percent fees to youtube i mean <laughs> if you're a big streamer you know that's 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 big that's a big chunk of change there that you're that you're making in addition to your tips uh nicholas van sager have a tip five bucks one beer to seth for all he's done for the monero community thank you nicholas van saberhagen I'm just excited to be able to do more. I'm glad. I'm glad to have some more time to focus on Monero. I know if, I've been gone for for a while in the uh, in body, but not in spirit. I don't know if that phrase actually works here, but <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been physically around the Monero space or at Monero events in a little while, unfortunately. But um, still been hanging around, still chatting a lot with with a lot of people within the within the space. And yeah, I'm I'm just pumped to be able to work on it more and bring a lot of the, the user experience we, we, stuff we had we had you out there as a, as an agent infiltrating the, exactly. the bitcoin community I mean, come on yeah. like you're, you're still playing the role is that like, we got, you, we got you. <laughs> can't blow my cover yet i still got all those connections you know i gotta gotta keep it going uh, keep keep shilling monero behind the scenes <laughs> you're doing a good job out of man well i know you i know you're short on time so i, I don't want to hold you up get back to the fam that obviously Thanks, man. Uh, more important than anything else and yeah hope to uh hope to see you around man maybe i could convince you to come down to mexico somehow maybe i could entice you i'm not, we'll I'm not giving up on to, that yet i, I haven't but you will the be, explicit dates for the trip that we're taking you will yet, be so. presenting remotely so we got you yeah. announcing that seth will definitely be doing pre uh, presenting remotely and uh yeah. maybe i'll convince if nothing you if nothing else i'll definitely do remote but we'll see if i can split it like i said i was saying i, I haven't booked the exact dates for the other trip so maybe i can shift it around to be more like front loaded um and maybe give me some time to to swing down for a, a quick trip to mexico city but we'll see